Live from Seattle, Washington, it's The Cube at Tableau Conference 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Tableau. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Kelly. Okay, welcome back everyone here live in Seattle, Washington for theCUBE for Tableau's Data 14 conference. I'm John Furrier, founder of SiliconANGLE. This is theCUBE. We go out to the events, extract the signal noise. Our next guest, exciting users here, Kevin Penry, operations leader and Amber Smart data analyst for LifeChurch.tv. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, so, um, one of the things I love about Tableau's conferences is that um, they have such a loyal audience of customers. Mm. Uh, it's fun, the energy's high, and you guys are obviously in data. Talk about what you guys are doing from your business, um, and you know, why, why are you guys here? Why are you guys a customer mm. of Tableau? Is it because you have all this data? You have a lot of action in your, in your fan base audience? Tell us. We do. Uh, Live Church, let me t tell you just a little bit about it. It's uh, been around for about 18 years. Uh, we're in uh, six different states, uh, 20 locations, uh, a little over 60,000 on weekend attendance. Uh, heavy online presence, there's uh, beyond those 60,000 physical people in seats, there's about 120,000 uh, people uh, connecting on our website every, every weekend. Streaming there, we, uh, we're the developers of the Bible app, uh, which has 151 million downloads now on the App Store. And uh, so we, we really uh, look to media and see it as a, a very important uh, means of us accomplishing our mission. And, and so it's, it's like a, you know, in any stadium-like environment, there's mm -hmm. a physical space and a virtual space. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see the leaders kind of look at the virtual space as an opportunity, not as a separate siloed activity. Mm -hmm. How do you guys look at that? Because obviously, you know, people go to an, uh, the events or, or to church, you, the physical location, mm -hmm. and there's some face-to-face -face contact, but with mobile, the virtual face-to-face -face becomes an opportunity. How do you guys look at those environments and what do you guys do? Well, we try to uh, be very aware of them um, and we try to make them more. If, if a person is experiencing live church, uh, whether it be online, on their mobile, or whatever the case may be, we try to make it uh, more than just watching s somebody else experience live church, but we try to make it personal and more uh, connected. Uh, our speakers are uh, dressing the cameras and looking more closer, uh, you know, at the at the people on the other side of the lens. Uh, oftentimes, even the folks at our physical locations uh, see it as a part of of their uh, sacrifice to realize that the experience is going to be geared for the person that may not even be in the room that day. Uh, so our, our our senior pastor is going to be communicating directly uh, with the people that are there and acknowledging them and welcoming them to uh, to the experiences. I love the IT angle here. Everyone talks about outcomes, um, mm -hmm. and in this case, outcome value for your customers, if you will, mm -hmm. is relationships, knowledge, interactions. Yeah. Yeah. Amber, share how you guys do that. I mean, there's obviously data involved, 150 million downloads, you have a great digital footprint. Sure. How mm -hmm. do you guys harness that data, and how do you, from an IT-like perspective, how do you guys create great outcomes for uh, your fans, audience, customers? Sure. Well, um, with it being a church, it is very relational, and it should be relational, but we believe that data has a place at the table. And so one way that we use um, data is we like to see how well are we connecting? How well are we getting people plugged in? Are we growing? Are, is our attendance growing? Um, attendance is our number one key performance indicator. Everything is tied to that. So we're constantly monitoring that and using that piece of data. David Pogue, who used to write for the New York Times, came on theCUBE at an event we did with IBM. He now writes for Yahoo, does the video thing over there. And he says, he's like, it's so obvious you should give the video away because it drives more physical presence. And he uses the TED example where they pay like $6,000 a ticket and um, you know, they have that, the free videos. And he also talks about rock music and music musicians. They, give them, they got to test the albums out before you want to see them live. Do you see the correlation between the data on online and physical to that level of granularity? Can you see spikes in usage online and correlate that directly to attendance? Sure. I know, for example, if there's bad weather in an, in an area of one of our physical locations, our attendance online will spike up. We also have um, series throughout the year that we call, one of them we call is At The Movies. And we're, um, due to licensing, we're not able to record that. And so if people want to view that, um, they can view it online. Because we have, I think, about 60 online experiences every week, opportunities for people to come watch it. So yeah, we do see that correlation. 
So Tableau kind of has the magic juju as Dave Vellante, my co-host, who's actually not here this week, but you know, the magic, the magic that happens and the visualization. We were just talking with Dave, we did the keynote on stage. How are you guys using Tableau um, as, as users of Tableau and how does that, has it become addictive? Is it uh, giving you share some of your stories? Sure. Um, well, one thing that's great about Tableau is that you can start small and then and grow. Um, you don't have to go all in with this Im immense expense. So we started small, and usually we try to meet the user where they are. We get um, the users within the organization. I usually connect with them one-on-one, -on -one, and I'll ask them, you know, what problem are you trying to solve currently? Um, get them excited about it, get them in, um, interested in it, get them curious, getting them asking questions, and it typically just spreads, it becomes its own thing. Yeah. Um, you want to add yeah, to that? yeah, and our, our culture, our organizational culture is really geared towards high feedback. So we were continually looking for outcomes, looking for evidence, uh, not just, we want to be self-aware. We don't want to convince ourselves that, uh, that we may be doing something well, if in fact we're not. I, I've always said that, that we, we run the risk of becoming like a, a bad American Idol audition if we, uh, if we go through life without really uh, having our eyes open, self-awareness with high feedback. So we had that even before, uh, in the earliest years of the organization, mm -hmm. we found ourselves surrounded by that information. You know, it might have been the early days, it might have been in the form of spreadsheets or uh, in a spiral notebook. And uh, as time has gone on now, we're surrounded with a lot of visuals and Tableau's contributing significantly mm -hmm. to it. Uh, really so listening is key, those. right? So you need to key. listen and, mm -hmm. and match your vision, what you think <laughs> you think is happening, to what you what's really happening. Absolutely. That's the key, right? So we just, everyone has that kind of group think problem that they're trying to avoid, that blind spot where yeah. you think you're doing great yeah. and mm -hmm. you might be misconnecting it. And, that, and that's a time lag. How does real time affect you guys? It must be a huge yeah. impact. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. We are constantly, um, like for attendance, for example, that's real time. That's updated every 15 minutes um, as the weekend is progressing. That gives our um, leadership team an idea of how things are going. Our um, executive pastor may tweak his message a little bit, depending on how that's going. So we do rely on real time data. Kind of like yeah. current events, like we've tweaked our message here in our, core, in our editorial because the Apple event. Yes. Mm -hmm. You got everyone's iWatch yeah. and, yeah. and iPhone 6 Plus, which you know, we're all salivating for, but <laughs> it brings up a connection um, around user interface. Sure. How do you guys look at the user interface side of things? You constantly looking at, at, at how people are using the app, you're thinking about new form factors, are there a lot of developers involved? How are you guys structuring your innovation around keeping pace with that consumer um, desire to have one group want the latest and greatest, and some people just want ease of use. <laughs> yeah. Well, Am, why don't you talk about your, uh, when uh, you were actually the Scrum Master over all the developers. We developed all of our apps uh, in-house in and yeah. lead that. So uh, talk a little bit about it. Chat rooms, we, uh, uh, how do we connect with the people that are actually using some of the applications? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, we believe in leveraging technology, however possible, to further our mission. And so, um, we're not afraid, we're not risk adverse, so we like to try new things. We're constantly trying new things. We're constantly seeing how industry leaders around us are using things, and um, we're not afraid to just jump out there and try something different, something that's not traditional for even a church. Um, so you name it, we've probably tried it, yeah. and very innovative. Yeah, we try to, try to tweak as, as few variables as possible so we can be sure that we're associating an outcome with an action. And uh, as far as connecting with the users you spoke there, uh, many of our online events uh, are accompanied with live user chat. So we're yeah. actually able to, able to uh, connect. Did you guys write your own chat client? Are you leveraging off the shelf tools? No, we, we wrote, uh, wrote everything. Our own, wrote yeah. our own tools there. And uh, you know, we're heavy into Google Analytics, so we're always interested in. Uh, You're data geeks. We are. We are. <laughs> we are. <laughs> like us. Mm -hmm. um, so I got to ask you about the data, because you know, one of the things that we, we talk about is. You know, big data seems to be a category. One of the things that we've been sharing is we believe data is native in everything, yeah. every aspect of, of the touch points. How do you guys look at your digital strategy um, around as things start to become consumerized? You got obviously search engines, you got events with web um, on chat or video uh, rooms or hangouts, and um, you got social media, mobile apps. Are they stove pipes? How do you tie them all together? Wow. Yeah, it's a part of who we are. Yeah. It's uh, the same visions driving it all. Uh, we just, uh, we're, we're more than ready to um, access any resource that we feel like we can to further our mission, and technology we feel like has been 
one of the major tools from the earliest days of our organization. We've been. You have a social in media command center. <laughs> we have a global operations <laughs> Yes, we do. We have a global operations <laughs> center. We have uh, eyes in on everything. We have our uh, on our Bible app where we have 151 million installs. Uh, we've got. Uh, lots of user data coming in on that and seeing where it's at. Uh, we brought the social context of that, yeah. where there's actually people can invite friends and different things to it. And you know, all kidding aside, you know, you watch. Uh, you know, one of my favorite movies with my family is watching Bruce Almighty, and they have the, the file cabinets <laughs> and the emails, and you hit reply all, and, and uh, it's yeah. kind of a you know, it's it's good satire and, and it's comedy. But in reality, I mean, you can document thought on Twitter. You can see someone who's in the need or someone who's who wants to share, uh, these yeah. are really awesome gestures yeah. and they're little data points out there. So harnessing that and bringing that into the community is something that sounds like it's clear on your, on your agenda. It is. It is. How do you guys stay on top of things? And what are you doing to not miss a signal? Oh wow, well I think because we are so data aware, it's just on the forefront of us every day, all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're always mm -hmm. thinking about it. And we're all of us, um, about 50% of our organization has um, logged into Tableau and is using it, and so it's just, it's a core value of ours. And so I think it's just on the forefront of all of our brains and it's just an expectation almost. Do you remember what that. some of your viewer statistics are on from, our staff is a little over 400. Uh -huh. and, and about uh, 220 of those are logging into Tableau, so about 50%. How do you guys do that? How do you issue your licenses uh, on Tableau side? Is it all users? Do you have power users? How do you guys, for the folks that don't know Tableau, um, how many Tableau users do you have? Is there a limitation can you share? Well, we, um, we did not initially start with a core license, but that's where we are today. So a core license means we can have an unlimited number of users. I'm currently the um, main, I would say, power user of Tableau in our organization, but a um, few of our other employees are here at this conference to learn so that we can get more, yeah. more using it, but everyone has access. So Amber, I got to ask you, what is the coolest thing you've done with Tableau? Oh, that you gosh. can say, that's, wow, amazing. Mm. Cool is, it's your definition. Whatever you think is the coolest thing you've yeah. done. Yeah. You know what I love about it is just how quickly I can pull a ton of data together and just have an aha moment. I know recently um, we had a question of how can we get more people plugged in to serve? Because it takes an army of people to make every weekend happen. And the question was, well, how many people have applied but have never been plugged in? And the question was, well, you know, it's probably not that many, but it might be interesting to look at it. And I was, in just a few moments, was able to pull all that data together. And we found out we had 3,300 people who had applied but had never been plugged in and still had plenty of time left, because um, we background check all of our volunteers. So they had plenty of time left to get plugged in and serve. Um, huge opportunity right there, and it was an aha moment for our campuses. In terms of, wow, we've got to get on this pretty quickly. Yeah, we have, there is, there is, a, there is a opportunity right here, whether it's within our uh, operating process or, or something that we're doing, there, there's a huge opportunity we need to jump on right here. You know, you bring up the operational cycle, so on the ops side, has there any, yep. been anything that you've seen that's been like, something that you didn't expect, that, that an aha moment that you could share? Well, one of the uh, big things that we do is, is how, we have multiple services, uh, so we have, uh, everybody usually, you know, is used to coming to church at one time on a weekend, you know, 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, something like that. It's a flash mob. Yes, it is. So, <laughs> Literally. So, uh, one of our biggest challenges is how to effectively distribute everybody who would come to church across ex uh, times that they might not otherwise choose to go to, in order so we can grow. So we will have our typical uh, campus location sites will have as many as six, seven, or eight service times. And so we use it heavily uh, to evaluate uh, the capacity of the rooms, how full they are, and then our local uh, site leadership uh, becomes very uh, effective at helping people, inspiring people to move to those maybe uh, less opportune times to get be able for more people to come and attend. If so, if you could, I may ask you a question. If you can, if you can have a technology miracle, what would it be? That could just, if things could change from a tech perspective, a new feature, a new bell or whistle, a new functionality. Mm. Amber, what would it be? Man, that is a hard question. There's no real right answer because I, we, I mean, I have yeah. a couple yeah. of wishes. Tough. I haven't, I haven't an eye watch now. Ask question. <laughs> so what would you have it to be? Yeah. I've got an eye watch right now. I don't wear, I don't <laughs> yeah. actually, I've never, I haven't worn a watch in over 25 years, so I'm not a big watch okay. person, but okay. yeah. certainly the Apple eye watch has gotten my attention. Um, I think my, my biggest wish would be, I would like to see more 
um, insight around the um, people I'm working with on a real-time basis. Okay. That's not a privacy in, uh, violation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I can connect better. Eliminate um, the lag. The, the bigger the gap between your information and, 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 what, and the, your cause, the greater uh, opportunity there might be to disassociate the two. Dave Vellante, my co-host, great quote. He says, real time's great. If you cross the street and the, the car hits you, it's yeah. not great. Yeah. Or real time's not good after you've lost the customer. Yes. So I think real time to me is one of those things that I look at is what's real time. I want mm. like real up to the moment value. Mm. To me, that's my categorical wish. Mm. Oh yeah, that would yeah. be great. Yeah. All right, well thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate it. I'd like you guys, if you could, just share with the folks out there uh, who are looking to embark on cloud and mobile and, and take the technology and put it in practice to have good outcomes. What would you share, Amber? It's been a good success, uh, either mindset, guiding principle, Sure. Technology you, you trust in the hammer and the nail that you use the most, or <laughs> saw, or whatever tool you have, share, share yeah. some uh, insight. Well, we always um, say around um, our organization, start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. And um, I think the culture is very important. Um, and even if your culture isn't where it needs to be, start where you are, do what you can. But I think um, what's happening at Life Church is very special and unusual. And I think the key to that is that we have leadership who's creating great vision and culture. We've got an IT team who's very um, supportive of our um, tech needs. Mm -hmm. We've got a data evangelist. I, I think it's important to have somebody who's dedicated to um, this role that's not trying to do 10 other things. Um, and I think the data evangelist, their, their ability to connect with the users and meet the user where they are is really, really important. And I think when all those components are working in unison, you get a lot of momentum, but that for us- The we, cohesiveness yeah. of that yeah. Yeah. equation. Yeah, but yeah. if one of those pieces is off or not yeah. working properly, man, um, it just- Things fall off. They fall, yeah. 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 David? I'd say uh, self-awareness. You know, um, I think an, an organization and its leadership valuing feedback, really wanting to know truth, having a desire for truth, not, uh, not being willing to deceive themselves into something that they want to believe, and being willing to surround themselves with data as close to real time as possible to what that is, so that you can effectively change your course, uh, respond, and uh, see what works. Incorporate what is working, stop doing what's not working. You know, that's a really good point. I think, you know, Jeff Kelly, who was, uh, uh, took a break uh, to make room for you guys, he wrote, just did a survey with, um, uh, around Hadoop and big data deployments on the mm -hmm. IT side, and the survey results were very interesting. They asked, how, how would you grade yourself? The IT people grade themselves, oh, we're doing great. The business units or the user group say, no, you're not doing good, and that's to the, your point, Amber, about going and meeting the users rather than pulling the users into the IT world. Yeah. So that's, this is a mindset, right? I mean, it who's is. the customer, right? It Where's, is. Yeah. And I think that one, that's the, I think the one aha moment I've seen is, the shift in the culture of the, of the technology business where you put down some IT and then everyone conforms to that. Mm -hmm. And now the market is, with consumerization and connected devices, they have a lot new dynamics in play, crowdsourcing, data, user data, mobile yeah. data. Yeah. The applications are dictating the policy for the tooling and infrastructure. Do you guys see that same trend? We do. It's, uh, I, I think for us, the way we would describe it, we might be saying the same thing whenever we talk about it. It's not about us. It's about, it's about the audience. It's, for us, it's about the user. It's about who, who are we trying to convey information to. And uh, too many times, uh, it becomes about the person who's doing the talking rather than who they're trying to get to listen. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I'm certainly, whether it's IT, whether it's operations, whatever the case may be, we really want to see information that comes from the people in the seats and understand what is working to, to, for life change to occur in them. Amber, what about your take on the demographics of uh, personnel, mm -hmm. the younger generation versus the old guys like me? Yeah. Um, we have, we're, well, I mean, I consider myself pretty open-minded, but in general, I'm still, I mean, I'm in my 40s. I'm not in my 20s. So, you know, we're, they're the younger generation that are natively web. Do you yeah. see a difference? I mean, when you see new people come on board and working with you? Well, you know, really, we talk about, we see two different type of users. We see resistors and influencers. And, I mean, you can probably say an older generation might be a little bit more of a resistor, but that's not necessarily the case. I mean, I've got, we've got um, team members on staff that are 
well into their 40s and 50s and are huge influencers and proponents of technology and data. And I mean, that's just who we are. And so I think a lot of people that come on staff just naturally um, adopt that. But um, yeah, I mean, so I would the, just the older users people. tend to be more ingrained in like email, so they want they want functionality. Would you say that? Yeah. And the younger generations are more kind of they kick tires and push the limits of things. Sure, sure. Yeah, there there can be that. But we move so fast as an organization. Um, gosh, I mean, I think I just see that it's a core theme with within our organization. That, uh, a high rate of feedback and a high a high rate of being of willingness to change results mm -hmm. in a very dynamic environment. Yeah. I love what you guys are doing. I think it's a real innovation. So my, I guess my final question will be um, for you guys would be, share a story where something happened that was innovative and important to your organization that wouldn't have been there if there wasn't for the mobile environment, mm. this new connected, the mm. crowdsourcing, mm. this new dynamic where it's not just a unidirectional monologue, it's a yeah. truly omnidirectional multi-handshaking world now with the data. So what have you guys discovered that's been amazing? Uh, uh, what, what, for me it would be, uh, I mentioned we have 151 uh, installs on the Bible app. Uh, more recent, the largest number of installs have come uh, from uh, Pakistan, the parts of the country where it may not be as safe to own a physical uh, Bible uh, that you can in fact download an electronic version in a much more uh, uh, acceptable discreet. way. Discreet, so your community is expanding way. rapidly. Yeah. Uh, expanding and and it, it's free. It's it, it's for them, and it just it feels like that we've moved into a, a, a season that's uh, that's fit for where we where the world is today, and so that's very fulfilling. Amber, mm -hmm. any, anything you'd like to share? Any things that have that you've seen that have been amazing around this new crowd talking back, democratization mm -hmm. of content and media? Yeah, I would just say don't resist it. You know, embrace it and um, utilize it, and there's just it's it's rich, and there's so much there to learn from and use, and just don't resist it. Thanks so much, Kevin Penry, operations leader, Amber Smart, data analyst at LiveChurch.tv. I mean, Life Church, Life Church, not Live Church, and although it is live, <laughs> LifeChurch.tv. Yep. This is the Cube, live in Seattle, Washington, for Tableau Data 14. I'm John Furrier. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>